Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about our musical universe because it is such fascinating material. I think you'll really enjoy it. In 1772, a German astronomer by the name of Johann Bodes measured the distance between the planets. It was so precise and it was replicated many, many times with the exact same distances and mathematical formulations that it was, later became known as Bode's Law. Now in science, when something becomes a law, it means that it has to be replicated with the exact same thing numerous times. For instance, like the law of gravity, that's Sir Isaac Newton, what comes up must come down. But what's interesting is sometimes after many, many centuries and years, they find that all of those um, scientific formulas that were actually laws are now not quite laws. If you read any of Brian Greene's material, he'll talk about that some of those scientists out there are now refuting the law of gravity. Anyway, so let's get back to Johann Bodes. So he measured the distance between the planets and he found that it was a two to one ratio, which is exactly the ratio of a musical octave. And what it means with the planets starting from the sun, which is Mercury, which is closest to the sun going out, they spin on their axis twice as fast as their predecessor. And so what they concluded was that each planet represents an octave and that there's an octave between them, a musical octave. Okay, so let me explain to you too, they all have a vibration and vibrations produce tones. So you have the planets out there and they're spinning around on their axis and as they're spinning around, they're producing a tone. Now those of you when you were little, if you played with one of those little toy tops and you would pump it and pump it and it would spin faster and faster and pretty soon you could let the pump go and it would spin on its own and it would hum. It actually created a tone. That's what the planets do. They are out, out there and in the universe and they're actually creating a tone. The tone of the earth was measured in 1960 during the Chilean earthquake and it was measured to be 20 octaves below the lowest sound that the human ear could hear. They also said that the planets aligned themselves about approximately every 12 years. And what that means is when they align themselves, they align themselves almost vertically. Now it's not a perfect alignment, but they've said if we could actually hear, you know, if you're looking at an, um, a chord, a musical chord, how the notes are aligned with each other, they said if we could hear the tones that are produced at that particular time when those planets are aligned with each other, that it would sound like a musical chord resonating in the universe. I think that's amazing. The sun, stars produce tones. They've measured um, stars and they've actually found that some stars produce a tone that's never been heard of in the universe. The sun produces tones and the tones of the sun that they've measured, they sound like pipe organs or guitars on the outer, uh, outer rim of the sun. Animals also respond to music. Um, there's a fascinating story of what happened in 1985. There was approximately 3,000 beluga whales that got caught between two icebergs in the Bering Strait. They were taking turns and they were surfacing up to the top because there were some holes and they were able to get, you know, breath. And then they went down and they were taking turns, but the whales were becoming exhausted. Some of them were, there was not enough food and some of them were even dying. So the Russian government came in with their icebreaker and they broke up the iceberg, allowing a pathway for the whales to follow that path and to get out into the sea. But unfortunately, the whales were not moving. So somebody suggested, they said, they're not moving because whales like music. We need to play music for them. So there was different genres of music that they played and the whales still would not budge. Then somebody suggested, they said, I'm sure those whales must love classical music. So that's what they played. And guess what happened? The whales followed that music to the open sea and to freedom. There is a wonderful story called A Symphony of Whales, and it re-goes into this beautiful story about these 3,000 beluga whales and how they were given freedom. Now, if you go out into nature, <clears throat> if you go 
maybe on a nature walk. Na there's actually a tone, there's actually a sound in nature. And I'm not talking about the rustling of the trees or a, you know the sound of the brook or the water. It's a noise that represents nature itself and it's called flicker noise. So nature, the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars, even animals all respond to music. Birds also respond to music. They've taken pigeons and they've trained them to understand the difference between Bach and Stravinsky, and even Bach-like music and Stravinsky-like music. Let me tell you a personal story that we had as a family. A few years ago, we decided to do a service project with the SPCA with animals. We decided to be foster parents to animals. So we chose cats over dogs. We had, we've had dogs, but cats are a little easier. So we got a mother cat and her five baby kittens. And I remember them saying to us, you know, if one of these baby kittens dies, don't worry about it. It usually happens. Well, the mother can recognize if there's a, a cat that's kind of weak, and so she'll focus on the babies that are stronger. So there was one little baby that I noticed that she was kind of ignoring, so I would set my alarm, and every two hours I got up and fed this hand, fed this baby cat. I said to my sons, I said, I am determined that we are not going to lose one of these kittens. So what I did is I made certain that they were getting plenty of food from their mom, <clears throat> and I played classical music for them. They had classical music at different times of the day. Some of it was very soothing when they were going to sleep. Some of it was a lot more jazzy and lively when they were playing. Every two to three weeks, I had to take them back to the SPCA for them to measure them and weigh them and to see how they were doing. Every single time I took them back in, they said, these cats are at least double the age of what you have down. And I says, well, I got all my information from you. You gave me all these numbers. They says, well, they're twice the size. What are you doing? You know, you know, they don't look like they're overeating. You know, what's going on? So I said to them, I think it's the music I'm playing for them. Sure enough, not one of those cats died. And then when they were adopted, I put together, as a family, we put together this package of all these pictures that we had taken of them and also a CD to go with each kitten to their new family so that they could continue to listen to the music that they loved best. So that is just the power of music in our universe and with animals and with the sun and the moon and the stars. And I think it's amazing because I think there must be something within us that loves music. So it does have an impact in the universe, but its greatest impact is on human beings on our development and, all, and the entire organization of our neurological system. It's that powerful in our lives. Make sure that you are exposing your kids to music and yourself. You'll be a better person for it. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.